edition of Only One Egg Productions, where today we're going to build a computer. The first part is, of course, the motherboard, the Gigabyte GAZ77X-UD38 motherboard. Oh, look at this. Isn't it beautiful? Wouldn't you want one of these in your home? to sit on my motherboard. I have this Intel Quad Core i5 3570K 3.4 gigahertz CPU. The K stands for it's unlocked, which means you can overclock it, which I'm not going to do. I have a Salzman copper heat sink. They're very quiet. However, they have one minor drawback, these little copper pins here. Very good at dissipating heat. Also very sharp. Very easy to cut yourself while you're installing the fan. Next up, no good computer build would be complete without an excess of RAM. In this case, I've got two packages of J-Skill Aries Series dual channel RAM. So eight and eight is 16 total gigabytes will go on this computer. This is also going to be my first computer that's going to have a solid state drive. Samsung 840 Evo drive. Quite extraordinary. All that speed and power stuff, this little piece of plasticky thing. A Western Digital Black Series. These are the enterprise drives. This is the two terabyte Western Digital hard drive. 64 megabyte cache, also SATA, six gigabyte per second access. Very fast drive, hopefully a very reliable drive. I uh, ordered one of these, had to send it back because the first test showed it had bad sectors. Gigabyte GeForce GTX 650Ti, 2 gigabyte of DDR5 video RAM, big heat sink, big fans. And I also have back here my OEM copy of Windows 7, an ASUS uh, DVD burner, and a USB Three uh, card reader, the Corsair power supply, modular power supply, uh, HX 650, 650 watts. So when you add everything together, I'm still well below the 650s. This should be a great power supply for my build. Now that we've looked at all the parts that are going in the computer, what I'm going to do is start by putting this Intel Quad Core i5 3.4 gigahertz CPU in the mainboard. The first thing we got to do here is open this clip, the CPU cover, pull this plastic cover off, exposing the pins. You'll observe it's got all these marks on it. Specifically, it's got two little notches here to align it on the tray. There, that's on. Now we do this, snap that back on, and the CPU is installed. The next step to the build is putting on the CPU fan, putting this clip on the main board. Now we have the base plate on. Next step is a little messy. Open up this little thing of thermal grease and smear it on the top of the CPU. Take a plastic bag, you put your finger in the bag, smear it around so you get a complete covering because we don't want to suffer from any thermal issues. The next step is the beautiful fan itself. We gently lower the fan top the CPU. Okay. Plug the uh, fan four pin into the four pin header on the main board. Okay. Fan installed. Now we're going to put in our RAM. G Skill Aries Series RAM. This is bank one or channel one. This is channel two. Bank 
3 or channel 3. It's kind of a tight fit. shield on the connection. I am installing the wonderful Gigabyte 2 Gig DDR5 RAM video card. There we gently. That's in. Finally, we're going to open up our brand new Corsair HX650 watt power supply and see if we can power this baby up. This goes on here like this in here. Now, for the big moment, we find out whether all these components, the CPU, the fan, the video card, the RAM, power supply, I've hooked up the DVD discs so I can play or so I can load Linux. All we have left now is the big moment. Push the button, see if everything posts. Power on button right here. Come on, baby. Light up. And... Linux Mint will be posting. Start Linux Mint. There you go. Linux Mint popped right up. Yes! We have a working computer. It works. All the components work. Now we just have to stuff them in that box. Well, okay then. We've uh, test fired up the motherboard, made sure all the uh, main components are working together nicely, and we're going to put them in our gigabyte iSilo 230 case. What we'll do is we'll take the cover off. Of course, just put the standoffs in here so I don't short the board against the case itself. I've got my nine little standoffs here inside the case. I want to put the hard drives in while I still have lots of room to do it. nice thing about these cases from Gigabyte is they have these sliders. No screws, just sliders. And then we take the front panel. Device is installed. Last step is putting in 
the cool video car. Ready. Bring the power cable over. Well, there you are, kids. My new gigabyte-based computer, all wired up and ready to fire up one more time and see if it still works. Well, we've officially entered the wee hours of the morning. It is time to see whether it's been done correctly. So, we hit the power button. Ooh, pretty blue light. And there you have it, a perfectly functional home-built computer. Or, well, check back in a little bit and I'll have the software installed. Okay, a few days have passed. I've got the computer installed on my desk. Windows 7 has been loaded on the solid-state drive. Also on this uh, computer, I have a, a TV card so I can watch TV shows while I'm working on the computer quite handy. Watch the news or weather or whatever. Or watch commercials. I did have an issue configuring the UEFI BIOS. I'm sure it's really great for making a more secure system. For It also makes it damn near impossible to make a dual boot computer. I've in the past run dual booting systems where I had Linux booting alongside Windows, but I couldn't get the UEFI BIOS to cooperate and let me dual boot. So the answer, it seems, was to get this 32 gigabyte USB flash drive, upon which I've installed Linux, just like it was another hard drive, and I can put it in the USB and boot up my computer off this USB stick. First we have to... Uh, shut down Windows. The way this works is I have a USB 3 uh, flash drive which I put into the USB 3 port on the front panel of the computer. Turn on the computer. And then when you get to the BIOS flash screen you mash this little F12 key for all your words and you get this menu which is the uh, select your boot device. I go down to Patriot Memory, hit return and Linux starts booting. Now I have to uh, log in. And this is my Linux desktop. Although it's uh, a little bit slower than using the regular SATA connection, going through the USB 3 connector, there are a couple advantages to having an operating system loaded onto a USB stick. First of all, when I pull it out, nothing but nothing is going to hack my USB stick when it's sitting here on the desktop. That's pretty darn secure. Another advantage to having a USB stick operating system like this with Linux is, let's say, for example, Windows gets corrupted or my hard drive starts going out. I can use the utilities on my Linux USB stick to boot the machine, look at those drives, and probably save some very valuable data if and when that occurrence happens. Overall, it's a really good computer. I'm very happy with it. I hope you've been at least a little bit entertained, if not educated, on how to build a computer, and it really is quite simple. Thank you for watching, and do check back for future videos offered by Only One Egg Productions.